Welcome to the Command and General Staff Officer Course Class of 2019 Graduation Ceremony on Flag Day and the U.S. Army's 244th birthday. Please join me in a round of applause for the 312th Army Reserve Band from Lawrence, Kansas, directed by Chief Warrant Officer to Nicholas Proctor. Now please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for honors and the national anthem sung by Major Promoter Mark Jeffords, Medical Corps, and the invocation given by the CGSC Chaplain, Major Promotable Sean Gee. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Will you join with me in prayer? Almighty God, today we ask your blessing upon this graduation ceremony and all in attendance. We thank you for all the things that have made this day and the ceremony a reality for the splendid minds and abilities of these graduating students, for the enthusiasm and dedication of the faculty, for the helpfulness and concern of the staff, we give you thanks. Grant to all the graduates an extra measure of wisdom so that they might work together for a better future, a peaceful and hope-filled future for each of our nation's sons and daughters. Amen. Please be seated. The official party for today's ceremony, seated center stage from your right to left, is General Stephen J. Townsend, Commander, United States Army Training and Doctrine Command. Lieutenant General Michael D. Lundy, Commander, Combined Arms Center and Fort Leavenworth, and the Commandant of the Command and General Staff College. Command Sergeant Major Eric C. Dosty, Command Sergeant Major Combined Arms Center and Fort Leavenworth, and the Command Sergeant Major of the Command and General Staff College. Lieutenant General Robert Arder, United States Army retired, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army Emeritus, Chairman Emeritus of the CGSC Foundation, member of the Fort Leavenworth Hall of Fame, and former Deputy Commandant of the Command and General Staff College. Brigadier General Stephen J. Moranian, Provost, Army University and Deputy Commandant Command and General Staff College. Dr. James B. Martin, D. 
Dean of Academics of the Command and General Staff College. Colonel Robert Alt, Director of the Command and General Staff College. Colonel Robert Law, Director of the Department of Logistics and Resource Operations and is presenting for the Santa Fe Chapter of the Military Officers Association of America. Lieutenant General Retired Stanley E. Clark III, United States Air Force, today presenting the Father Donald Smythe Award. And Mr. Mike Hockley, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army in Kansas and CGSE Foundation member. Today's guest speaker for the graduation ceremony is the Commanding General, Training and Doctrine Command, General Stephen J. Townsend. Today's award bearers are Petty Officer First Class, Elijah L. Bennett, United States Navy, and Corporal Giovanni Johnson, United States Marine Corps. We also extend a special warm welcome to our guest, Mrs. Michael D. Lundy, spouse of the Commandant of the Command and General Staff College, and we welcome all general officers, international military attaches, commanders and command sergeant majors, international student sponsors, families of our special award recipients, friends and supporters of Army University and the Command and General Staff College. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the Combined Arms Center and Fort Leavenworth, Lieutenant General Michael Lundy. Well, good morning. Well, we spent a lot of time in this auditorium this year, and, and I guess as we went through probably one of the toughest winters we've seen in the Midwest in a long time, and it's appropriate that Mother Nature votes again and we're back here uh, in the big bedroom. But uh, to the class of 2019, uh, as I told you in my Commandant's farewell last week, you've got a tremendous amount to be very proud of. This has been a phenomenal class, both collectively and at the individual level. And you can be very proud of all that you've accomplished. And as I said, your watch starts again this afternoon when you leave this post. And you're now stewards of our profession. And there's more expected of you by your soldiers, your sailors, your airmen, your Marines, your leaders. And I'm absolutely confident that you're all ready to meet that challenge. And our nation and all the nations that are represented here by our international officers are in great hands. So I wish you the very best, and it's my honor today to introduce our guest speaker, General Steve Townsend, the Commanding General of Training and Doctrine Command, and the next commander of Africa Command. Sir, thanks for joining us today. Cool. Good morning. All right, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, much better. Thanks for that uh, brief introduction. Mike, just like I would like to have it done. So it says here in my script, what a beautiful June day in our nation's heartland. <laughs> That's what it says. Um, yeah, so I reckon, <laughs> I reckon you all have probably had enough rain for a lifetime out here this year. Um, when I was uh, a student here 25 years ago, if some of you may have been here on the faculty and staff, there was, there was a great flood. <laughs> It was the great floods of 93, 94 then. And uh, they said it was a 100-year flood, but apparently it's only like a 20-year flood. <laughs> 25 years ago, almost to the day, I was sitting where you are now. Well, no, we were outside sweating in our Class A's, by the way. We were sweating in our Class A's. You guys are blessed today. I was headed to Fort Benning. I was excited to be rejoining a tactical unit in our field army. I remember well that my priority that day was actually finishing getting the family into the vehicle and getting on the road. So I don't have any misconceptions about where my remarks fit into the orbit of your lives right now. <laughs> so I will be brief. There are a few groups of folks that I want to uh, recognize today. To the staff and faculty here at CGSC, we do our best, the Army does, to send you the world's best and brightest warriors and you do your best to prepare them uh, for the future challenges that lie ahead. You should take great satisfaction in the long-term impact that your work here has on our Army, uh, on our armed forces, on your nation's armed forces, and our security uh, in, in, in the Western way of life. 
from battalion commander to MACOM commander, I have been the beneficiary of the iron majors that you turn out for our Army, and I extend a personal thank you to the faculty and staff for a job well done. To all the spouses and family members that are in attendance, and I'm told that uh, some of them are in here and some of them are in the other auditorium and some are in classrooms and some are probably sitting in cars with the engines running. <laughs> Thank you for your support of our graduates and for your personal commitment and support that allows them to serve our nation. None of us have gotten this far on our own. Your love and support is why they're able to do what they do for our nations uh, and why they're graduating today. And so for your continued love and support, it will be even more important in the years ahead. And then last, a thank you to our international fellows, our international officers and their families. You bring your unique cultural and professional experiences to our curriculum. Uh, you represent your country's best and brightest. Many of you have fought or will fight alongside of us in the future, and we're grateful for the contributions you have already made and the contributions you will make ahead. Um, as our partners and allies in a common cause, uh, we rely on you. With the exception of the U.S. intervention in Panama in 1989, every other combat operation or operational deployment that I have participated in in my career has involved a coalition of allies and partners, and I don't think it's going to be any different in the future. So thank you for being here. Please join me in a round of applause for our faculty, spouses, families, and international fellows. So there are a few things I never really understood about CGSC. First of all, why do they call the Marshall Award the white briefcase? Uh, I've never figured that out. As far as I know, there actually is no white briefcase, and there never has been. And I'm pretty sure there are no photographs of General Marshall carrying around a white briefcase. But that's just one of those great mysteries here. Maybe one of the historians here can tell me why that is later. Another thing that I never quite bought into is that old saw, this is the best year of your life. <laughs> now, I'd admit, I... <laughs> I admit I had a pretty good year, um, and I hope you did too. But I hope that the best year of our lives is now not one year or 25 years in our rearview mirrors. I hope somewhere the best year of our life lies out ahead. I do have one memory uh, that's probably maybe been overcome by technology. I remember uh, I, used to, I lived over on a third infantry drive or loop and in a housing area then called Kansas Village. I think it's gone now. And I lived over there, and the walls were pretty thin. And at night, I had my little office down in the basement, and my little computer was there, and I was tapping away, and I could hear my neighbor tapping away on the other side of the wall. And back in those days, there wasn't this thing called autosave. You actually had to pause every now and then and deliberately save the work, your document you were working on. We were all crashing on our papers one night. It was like one in the morning, I think, because I was one of those guys. I never worked on it steadily. I always waited at the last minute and crashed on it the night before. So, so I... I, I <laughs> So that's what I was doing, and um, I had just had this little, I just had stopped to autosave, and about 30 seconds later, the power went out. And I'm going, holy cow, I dodged a bullet, and I hear this guttural scream coming through the wall. <laughs> I can't repeat what he was saying in this crowd, you can imagine, but he had not autosaved in a while, apparently. Anyway, I think life's a little better for you now. Okay, so your services selected you here to come here for a reason. First of all, you're leaving much better prepared than I was as an organizational planner and leader. Second, you've been given an opportunity to connect with a remarkable network of peers across the Army, across the armed services, and the interagency, and even across the international community here. Whether you realize it yet or not, even if your primary focus this year has been on lowering your golf handicap, you leave with an excellent professional network of peers and friends. And that network is going to sustain you and support you, and you can't even imagine the situations right now 
where this network of fellow peers, friends, fellow students will come in handy in the years ahead in your career. But it will, mark my words. Um, of all the friends that my wife, uh, Melissa, and I uh, hold most dear, a couple of those couples uh, that are the closest to us are folks that we met right here and got to know right here at Fort Leavenworth during CGSC. And I hope you've had the same experience. So your first responsibility as a professional officer is to master our trade. Your core competency is to fight and win our nation's wars. Our soldiers deserve your absolute best. In fact, their lives will often depend on it. Our nations have made a tremendous investment in you in the past year. So whether you're going to the operating force, the sustaining force, or the generating force, you're going to be doing heavy lifting as an iron major for our Army. Take what you have learned here and apply it out there in the field. But most importantly, go out there and be the leader that our soldiers deserve. So three points for you iron majors, and I'll get off the stage. Wherever you wind up as you return to the force. Number one, elevate your team play. Don't just solve your unit's problems, but come up with courses of actions that help higher headquarters solve larger problems. Number two, help your commander reinvigorate mission command in your unit. Focus on first things first. Whatever the unit's mission is, that must be your priority. Reduce the administrivia and the taskings and give time back to those company, battery, and troop commanders out there. Encourage and empower them to make decisions and use their initiative. Third, be a coach to the junior officers. A major, or for the naval officers, a commander, is a big deal to junior officers, especially to a lieutenant in a battalion-sized organization. Be a role model for them. They are watching you. They are listening to you, and they are learning from you. If you doubt that, just think back to the majors in your battalion, squadron, when you were a young junior officer. Be more of a coach and a mentor and less of a hammer. For the leadership and staff, but especially for the company troop and battery commanders, and remember, majors, those company troop and battery commanders don't work for you. They work for the battalion or squadron commander. Help them out. Okay, so let me close my remarks by simply saying congratulations, good luck, and Godspeed in the years ahead. We have the utmost faith and confidence in you and your commitment and your capabilities and in your leadership. Our soldiers and our nations will be counting on you. I know you will not fail us. Victory starts here. Good luck. CGSC would like to thank the following organizations that support or endow many of our awards. These awards support academic excellence. Those organizations are the Veterans of Foreign Wars, the Command and General Staff College Foundation, the Douglas MacArthur Foundation, the Edith and Harry Darty Foundation of Kansas City, and Lieutenant General Retired Arthur, the Military Officers Association of America, the Armed Forces Communications Electronics Association International, the Alexander Donovan Committee and Lieutenant General Retired Arter, the Gary and Moira Sinise in memory of Colonel Harris, Armed Forces Insurance in memory of Father Smythe, the CGSE class of 1978 in memory of Major General Hans Schloop, the David G. Beam Memorial Fund in memory of David Beam forever a champion of the International Military Student Program. We will now present the special awards to recognize outstanding achievement. Please hold your applause until all awards are presented. Families and friends, please feel free to come forward to take photographs. The General George C. Marshall Award is presented to the distinguished United States graduate of each class. General Townsend presents the General Marshall Award to Major Dana M. Gingrich, Infantry. <laughs> the
The general Dwight D. Eisenhower Award is presented to the distinguished international officer graduate of each class. General Townsend presents the General Eisenhower Award to Major Nicholas J. Stafford of the United Kingdom. <laughs> the General James M. Wright Award is presented to the distinguished major master logistician in each class. Lieutenant General Lundy will present the General Wright Award to Major Will Cunningham Logistics. <laughs> the General George S. Patton Jr. Award is presented to the Distinguished Master Tactician in each class. General Lundy presents the General Patton Award to Major Dana M. Gingrich Infantry. The General Douglas MacArthur Award recognizes scholarship and professional writing on the subject of military leadership. Lieutenant General Lundy presents the General MacArthur Award to Major Dana M. Gingrich, Infantry. The Iron Major Award goes to the male and female students who finish first in a grueling series of events designed to test endurance and strength. Command Sergeant Major Dosti presents the Iron Major Award to Major Nicholas Wiemet, Infantry, with an overall time of 49 minutes and 10 seconds. Command Sergeant Major Dossi presents the Iron Major Award to Major Katie Richardson, Civil Affairs, with an overall time of 1 hour, 24 minutes, and 39 seconds. The Arthur Darby Award is awarded to the student for excellent scholarship and writing in military history. General Arthur presents the Arthur Darby Award to Major Eric C. Alfson, Chaplain Corps. The Order Donovan Award goes to the class graduate who earned the highest overall grade point average for the year. General Order presents the Order Donovan Award to Major Edward A. Brady, United States Air Force. The General John J. Pershing Award recognizes the outstanding non-resident graduate from each of the four annual advanced operation courses of distance learning. The recipient was selected based on academic performance in both the Common Core and the 12-month Advanced Operations Course Distance Learning Course. Brigadier General Moranian presents the General Pershing Award to Major Scott T. Dahl, Armor. The Major General Hans Schloop Award recognizes the importance of relationships developed among the network of friends and professional acquaintances made while attending the Command and General Staff College. 
General Moranian presents the General Hans Schloop Award to Major Martijn Rovers from the Kingdom of the Netherlands. The Beer Brooks Award is awarded for the most outstanding Master of Military Art and Science thesis. Dr. Martin presents the Beer Brooks Award to Major Greg Hope, Armour. The Civilian and Military Educator of the Year Awards recognizes educators who have distinguished themselves by advancing the field of joint military education. Dr. Martin presents the Military Educator of the Year Award to Lieutenant Colonel Trent Lithgow, Department of Tactics, Command and General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth. Dr. Derek Mallett, Department of Military History, Command and General Staff College at Fort Gordon Satellite Campus, has been recognized as the Civilian Educator of the Year in a ceremony held earlier this month. The Homeland Security Studies Award recognizes research excellence in homeland security, homeland defense, and defense to the support of civil authorities. Colonel Alt presents the Homeland Security Studies Award to Major Eric C. Alfson, Chaplain Corps. The Excellence in Joint Forces Warfare Award is awarded to the student who contributes most significantly to the study of joint service warfare in each CGSOC class. Colonel Robert Law, the Director of the Department of Logistics and Resource Operations, is presenting for the Santa Fe Chapter of the Military Officers Association of America and presents the Excellence in Joint Service Warfare Award to Major Jason Jones, Logistics. The Father Donald Smythe Award recognizes excellence in military history. Lieutenant General Retired Stanley E. Clark III, United States Air Force, presents the Father Donald Smythe Award to Major Andrew Fair, Functional Area 59, Army Strategist. The Simon Center Interagency Writing Award recognizes scholarship that advances interagency cooperation, coordination, and collaboration. Mr. Mike Hockley, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army and the CGSC Foundation member, presents the Simon Center Interagency Writing Award to Major Alzaki, Indonesian National Armed Forces. The Lieutenant Colonel Boyd McKenna Harris Leadership Award is presented for recognized superior research by a resident CGSOC student in the field of organizational leadership. Mr. Hockley presents the Lieutenant Colonel Boyd McKenna Harris Award to Major Dana M. Gingrich, Infantry. <laughs> the 
The Brigadier General Benjamin H. Grierson Award goes to the student who demonstrates excellence in strategic studies. Mr. Hockley presents the General Grierson Award to Major David Queck, Singapore. Please join me in a round of applause for all of our special award winners. Since 1974, when Congress enacted legislation authorizing the Command and General Staff College to award the Master of Military Art and Science degree, 6,907 degrees have been conferred to United States and international graduates of the Command and General Staff Officers course. Please hold your applause until all degrees are conferred. Major Abdel Salam Abdullahi, Niger Armed Forces. Major Kurt Matthew Abel, Special Forces. Major Kane D. Adeniya, Nigerian Army. Major Taliyop Omalara Odiyami, Medical Service. Major Tarek Alamiyan, Jordan, Armed Forces. Major Eric C. Alfson, Chaplain Corps. Major Fahad Al Hodif, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Major Al Zaki, the Indonesian National Armed Forces. Major Ernesto Almador, the Third Infantry. Major John Anderson, United States Air Force. Major Christopher Adam Ashenhurst, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Colonel Emir Abdu, Kosovo Security Force. Major Derek F. Bartlett, Field Artillery. Major Gregory Bassett, Military Intelligence. Major Monk Bayar Bayarsaikan, Mongolian Armed Forces. Lieutenant Colonel Sebastian Becker, German Armed Forces. Major Diego Alexander Barano Rodriguez, National Army of Colombia.
Lieutenant Colonel S.A.E. Beng, Cameroon Armed Forces. Major Maston R. Bethel, United States Air Force. Major John Franklin Bradley, Chemical Corps. Major E. Aaron Brady, United States Air Force. <laughs> Lieutenant Justin Michael Branley, United States Navy. Major Brandon Chase Brim, Signal Corps. Major Trivius G. Caldwell, Infantry. Major John Campion, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel Flavio Americo, Brazilian Army. Major Jerry Wayne Champion II, Signal Corps. Major Bori Chan, Royal Cambodian Armed Forces. Captain Juan Tuan Chu, Vietnamese People's Army. Major David Allen Corder, Army Strategist. Major Michael J. Crooks, Armor. Major Aiden Irin Labode Dairo, Logistics. Lieutenant Robert Patrick Davis, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Philippe Aboud, Brazilian Army. <laughs> Captain Akindal Kolawal de Souza, Benin Armed Forces. Major James Deegan, New Zealand Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Yannick Deli, National Army of the Republic of Moldova. <laughs> Major Abdule Diakite, Mali Air Force. Captain Von Hai Din, Vietnam People's Army. Captain Babakar Amadou Diop, Singalese Armed Forces. Major Jonathan P. Dixon, United States Air Force. Major Mild Donetsky, Army of the Republic of Macedonia. Major Yoon G. Dunham, Logistics. Major Scott Emmons, Field Artillery.
Major Brian E. Fanick, United States Air Force. Major Rashid Fiali, Royal Moroccan Armed Forces. Major Mark Flynn, Logistics. Major Alfredo Garcia Serrano, Argentine Army. Major James Geiger, United States Marine Corps. Major Joshua T. Geis, Infantry. Major Brett Michael Gilbert, Signal Corps. Major Trey Goodwin, PSYOPs. Mr. Shannon L. Gorman, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Major Jason Growl, United States Marine Corps. Major Bradley A. Grimm, Military Intelligence. Major David Grisdale, Armor. Major Diago Armando Guzman Molina, Colombia Military Forces. Major Nicholas Ryan Haynes, Military Intelligence. Captain Amir Helic, Armed Forces of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Major Joseph A. Henderson, Military Intelligence. Major Christopher Joseph Harold, Engineer. Major Eric Wabakin Hognestad, Norwegian Armed Forces. Major Greg Hope, Armor. <laughs> Commandant Michael Hosback. <laughs> Cap Commandant Michael Hosback, <laughs> Irish Defense Forces. Lieutenant Colonel Ole Hupko, the Armed Forces of Ukraine. <laughs> Captain Miraj Husseinov, Azerbaijan Armed Forces. <laughs> Major Jason Dean Imboden, Signal Corps. Major Elias M. Israel, Infantry. Major David A. Jackson, Air Defense Artillery. Major Jabari M. Jackson, Armor. Major Ioseb Jeparatse, Georgian Defense Forces. Major John Brooks Jarnigan, Military Intelligence. Major Jabar Jabeli, Tunisian Armed Forces.
Major Gabriel Jimenez, Air Defense Artillery. Major Kevin Johnson, Adjutant General. Lieutenant Colonel Francisco Adelino Joan, Mozambique Defense Armed Forces. Major Daniel R. Jachinski, United States Air Force. Major Alice Kisik, Slovenian Army. Major Jacob William Cannell, Armor. Major Jan Kamenik, Armed Forces of the Czech Republic. Major Jeffrey Alex Crom, Jr., Logistics. Major Kundan Kumar, Indian Army. Major David Queck, Singapore Armed Forces. Major John Edwin Laird, Logistics. Lieutenant Ryan Charles Law, United States Navy. Special Agent Matthew Lee Lightfoot, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Major Chi Shun Lin, Republic of China, Taiwan Armed Forces. Major Caleb M. Ling, Infantry. Major Joshua Linville, Infantry. Major Matthew Liffinus, Simulation Operations and Battle Command. Major Vicente B. Mabarong, Jr., Armed Forces of the Philippines. Major Agnes Majani, Tanzania People's Defense Forces. Major Ricardo Emilio Malave, United States Air Force. Major Emanuela Malberti, Italian Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Emmanuel Enriquez Mamaril, United States Navy. Major Joseph Mike Mambo, Malawi Defense Force. <laughs> Captain Dinko Matasovic, Croatian Armed Forces. <laughs> Captain Herwan Mbega Osa, Gabonese Armed Forces. Major Curtis R. Michael, United States Air Force. Special Agent William L. Miller, Department of State. Major Patrick Makondawiri, Zambia Army.
Major Ali A. Mohammed, Lebanese Armed Forces. Major Arvin Omar Montez Manjiva, El Salvador Armed Forces. Major Arnaldo Montiel, Paraguayan Army. Major Kwan Moon, Armed Forces of the Republic of Korea. Major Abdul W. Muchibi, Uganda People's Defense Forces. Major Ephraim Ngoga, Rwanda Defense Force. Captain Othello Yandwe Ma, Armed Forces of Liberia. Major David Carroll Norwood, Air Defense Artillery. Major Matthew Freeman Noyes, Infantry. Major Roderick James O'Connor, Jr., Field Artillery. Major Aishatu Usman Isaka, Niger Armed Forces. Major Lorena Papa, Albanian Armed Forces. Major Adam Perry Poyer, Canadian Armed Forces. Major Uli Pilatus, Australian Army. Major Ovidiu Papescu, Romanian Land Forces Staff. Major Brad Privet, Special Forces. Major Mohammed Forhan Haider Rahman, Bangladesh Army. Major Bradley James Rakasi, Infantry. Major Mortain Rovers, Kingdom of the Netherlands Armed Forces. Major Gordon T. Richmond, Special Forces. Major Stephen E. Robinson, Special Forces. Major Sam Ruwiri, Uganda People's Defense Forces. Major Eric Richard Scarborough, Engineer. Major Patricia T. Schmaltz, Military Intelligence. Major Matthew Schultz, United States Marine Corps. Major Mohammed Sahili, Algerian Special Forces. Major Jeffrey Shadwick, Aviation. Major Abu Muhammad Shanur Shawan, Bangladesh Army.
Major Graham Patrick Shelley, Military Intelligence. Major Aram Simonyan, Armenian Armed Forces. Major Charles M. Spears, Public Affairs. Major Nicholas J. Stafford, British Army. Major Kyle D. Stillwell, Armor. Major Ian J. Strebel, Military Intelligence. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Sergei Sundikov, Ukrainian Armed Forces. Major Andrew Joseph Talone, Infantry. Major Derek E. Taylor, Chemical Corps. Major Suman Thapa, Napoli Army. Major Evan Thomas Trevet, Medical Corps. Major Shaheen Udin, Public Affairs. Major Anthony Varela, Field Artillery. Major Andrew Webb, Infantry. Major Trevor Clark Uyghurs, Infantry. Major Harry Willis, British Army. Major Sergio Wiley, Military Intelligence. Mr. Daniel S. Yoon, Defense Intelligence Agency. <laughs> Captain Daniel Georgiev Zakaryev, Armed Forces of the Republic of Bulgaria. Let's give all our MMAS graduates a well-deserved round of applause. We now recognize all CGSOC graduates who received master's degrees from other institutions while attending the Command and General Staff Officer course. They are indicated by a superscript symbol by their name in your programs. At this time, they are asked to stand both here and in their classrooms to be recognized and congratulated for their academic achievements. Colonel Alt, the director of the Command and General Staff College, assisted by Dr. Tom Creviston, will now present diplomas to the leaders of the class of 2019. These leaders represent the entire class. Please hold your applause until all these graduates have received their diplomas. The class president, Major Travis Owen, Aviation.
the class vice president, Major Thomas Herman Armour. The International Military Student Chief of Staff, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Spranger, Germany. <laughs> Section 1, Major Joseph Swendeman, Signal Corps. Section 2, Major Brandon Shaw, Aviation. Section 4, Major Dale McFeeders, Judge Advocate Corps. Section 5, Major Trivius Caldwell, Infantry. Section 6, Major Jason Kruptovich, Military Intelligence. Section 7, Major Robert Briggs, Aviation. Section 8, Major Lyle Milliman, Engineer. Section 9, Major Narea Call, Aviation. Section 10, Major Nicholas Wiemet, Infantry. Section 11, Major Kevin Britt, Aviation. Section 12, Major Matthew Sherburn, Cyber. Section 13, Major Elliot Proctor, Field Artillery. Section 14, Major Kelsey Rousey, Logistics. Section 15, Major Devlin Winkelstein, Cyber. Section 16, Major Audrey Benker, Medical Service. Section 17, Major John O'Connell, Logistics. Section 18, Major Benjamin Griffin, Military Intelligence. Section 19, Major Jennifer Gonzer, Engineer. Section 20, Art of War Scholars, Major Greg Hope, Armor. At this time, please join me in a round of applause for recognizing all of the graduates of the class of 2019. Please stand as the 312th Army Reserve Band plays the Joint Services Medley and remain standing for the departure of the official party.
Right toward the day of the nation's might, and the army goes rolling along. First of all, we have done fighting till the battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. And it's high, high, he, the army's on its way. Count off your nuns and strong, for we ere we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Thank you for attending today's ceremony in recognition of the Command and General Staff Officers Course Class of 2019. We wish all our graduates and their families all the best as they transition to their next assignment. Please keep in mind that all gates are open for outbound traffic as you depart Fort Leavenworth. Safe travels, everybody.